Welcome. Thank you. These are really great for short, fat people, by the way. Hold on, mate. There we go. Do you know what? I think, high, I think high stalls are a great leveller, actually. Nobody looks that brilliant on a high no, stall, unless really maybe Whitney Houston or somebody like that. Yeah, but you really and serious, I are like we're about to <laughs> sing folk songs. Yeah. Uh, did, did you bring a musical instrument, Shaka? I didn't, oh, okay. apart from my yodelling. No, I won't. Uh, <laughs> hello, everyone. You all right? It's hot in here, isn't it? It is hot. We, we've, we've got the air con on, but um, the reason you're hot and bothered is you've come direct from the middle of a pitch, a creative pitch. So thank you so much for welcome. joining us. And you're also doing an office move as well. So, you know, I really appreciate that you're coming. Uh, and um, I just wonder, I guess we could start with that. How's the pitch going? And, kind of, and without giving us any... Anything, Slightly go, public. No, but I mean, without giving, giving anything away, I think yeah. it'd be interesting to, to talk, uh, to start by looking at how you approach a pitch and how you develop an idea and how you work for it collaboratively and how you lead the team. Um, pitch is going... Uh, that's quite a few questions. That's all right. Uh, it's the start of the pitch. Um, so at the moment, everything looks rosy. Um, and uh, we're sort of in that, uh, that lovely first swathe where everything is possible uh, and it's, uh, anything can come from anywhere. Uh, so uh, tomorrow is, the, the, uh, yeah, is a rather big <laughs> review before mm -hmm. timings start getting very tight. Um, in terms of approaching it, I don't think it's... Um, it's not rocket science, really. Mm. You just want to be... I think it's not just about pictures, it's just generally about life. You want to be surrounded by uh, the best people and people uh, that are better than you, and that's nothing to do with age, and that's nothing to do with skill set or any of that kind of stuff. Um, it's just people who have <coughs> some, a lot of experience, uh, most importantly, I think, a passion and some curiosity, uh, and who are gonna bust an ass, uh, not for the hours, it's not about the hours, but uh, hopefully in the pursuit of something that's mm. um, a bit interesting, yeah. and that you'll be a bit chuffed to kind of be part of and make. Um, you, you weren't here earlier, so I'll just paraphrase. But we were talking uh, earlier about mentors and careers, mm. and the kind of uh, uh, and the way that careers can take different routes and aren't always just immediately like, uh, just from here to there or from there to there. And yeah. I know that you your career has taken quite a circuitous route, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but in a totally positive way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think maybe you could talk to us a little bit about that, about the kind of the journey to being a creative director and what you think the the value of having that sort of. Um, broad experience, um, what that value has been in, in terms of taking you to where you are today? Um, yeah, cool. I mean, I don't really know any different. Uh, so uh, it's a bit like, yeah. Um, so it, it sort of worked for me just because, as a, I suppose, as a personality, I, I quite like... Um, not quite like, I'm sort of, I'm motivated by doing things that I haven't really done before and the idea of repetition after repetition after... Oh, for all of us, that's not rocket science. Uh, I'm, I always want to try something new and I'm not particularly scared of that um, basically because I don't go into it know, thinking that I know it all and again it goes back to I'm going to sound like a broken bloody record but anyway surrounding yourself by good people <clears throat> and uh, I've been very lucky to be uh, to have grown up with people who are naturally mentors mm. so they kind of naturally sort of switch you into sort of a certain way of thinking I was telling someone today about um, I, I, I'm going to be interviewed by some of our junior creatives uh, for a thing and anyway and they were uh we were talking about you know the, the best pieces of advice or the, the sort of things you remember don't tend to be the big things mm. it's a bit like when you break up a relationship it's not usually over <laughs> one thing it's over all the little shitty things yeah uh, and it works the other way positively i suppose um and i remember a guy that um he worked for because I, I started off as a director and then I it's I started off these aren't doors that open and shut it's just you know mm. you sort of carry on but anyway and then I went into broadcast and I worked for Fox <laughs> uh, it was only for a year <laughs> everyone didn't know all this shit was going to happen that's my excuse uh, and then ITV and um, and then I went to Mother and then I was at Leah Burnett so they're all great places mm. <laughs> I'll leave you to figure out Fox yourselves. But anyway, um, and the guy who hired me, finally off into Fox, was this amazing guy called Bill Hogan, uh, much older, sort of gone through Warner Brothers, like a real stalwart American guy. And I was really young, I was like 23, 24, and um, he hired, I talked a whole bunch of rubbish in the interview, and uh, on, I should never have got the job ever. But anyway, he saw whatever what was he saw. The what was the job at Fox? Uh, it was to it was to direct, but it was to write as well. And they were launching channels. They were launching kids' channels. But he was asking. So it was, a, it was the creative department. There was no creative department. There was nothing. And right. It was. Uh, I've got to be honest. I don't. I don't know. I remember all the questions that you asked me. You know, when you're really aware of the fact that you're lying. Okay. And I just remember thinking, <laughs> just talking total <laughs> shit here. 
I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I it just keeps coming out of your it's mouth. It's just coming out of my mouth. But I was so... I wasn't doing it, like... I wasn't doing it to try and sound like a smart ass. I was so desperate to get the job. Uh, and I, he just even said one, so one thing. I don't forget this. It was such a random <laughs> thing. He went, so do you have a lot of flame experience? And I remember just thinking, what <laughs> the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> flame. And I was like, is that like... I smoked at the time. I was like, is he like, do I smoke really well? <laughs> I was like, I just got hours of flame experience. <laughs> I'm just so good at flame. Uh, anyway, sorry, that's irrelevant. Uh, Bill, sorry, I could I go rambling. Cass and hey. Leanna are at the back there. They, they, well, I work with them and they'll vouch for the fact that I can wang on for ages, so stop me at any point. No, no, I love it. But, uh, <laughs> thank you, my little sister. Um, so anyway, uh, and Bill said to me, and he just kept smiling at me and he sort of looked a bit like Father Christmas and he was incredibly sweet and endearing and he just sort of nodded and obviously now when I think about all the things that he asked me, obviously I realised I was talking total shit, but he obviously saw something mm. and he took a punt. And I remember him saying, and he told me at the time, so this, this interview finished and he went, look, um, it's great that I want you to come on board. And, uh, and he said something that at the time was really strange. He said, right, so uh, there's one really important thing that I want you to remember. And I was like, waiting for something really sage. And he said, so what, the opportunity I'm giving you now, uh, you have to promise me that as you go through your career, uh, you will always try and find people to give opportunities to. Uh, which on a 23-year-old is quite mm. lost. It mm. stayed in my brain because I knew I didn't really fully understand it. And I really dug him. And I just, you know, sometimes you just get a sense that like a sensei is saying mm. something to mm. you, but you have no idea what it really means. Yes. And, uh, and it just stayed in my head. And it's, it, I realised over, you know, the last whatever, 16, 17 years, it's been something that just bedded in. And it, you have to... I think the generosity and generous acts and opportunities that you are given as you are coming up are the things, hopefully, that shape you to be, in some shape or form, kind of make sure you do the same for people coming up. And it's a, it's a cool cycle, man, if you can get it, into it. It really I is. And I always think life's long. People say life's short, but life's long as well, you know. And the people you meet along the way, you never know where it is that you're going to be meeting 100%. that person that's at, a, a, again. So, yeah. you know, so people always sort of say life's short. But remind yourself, li life's long too. But, but also, it was sort of... <laughs> On top of that, that there's something, I don't, I, there's just something fucking amazing if you find talent, mm. and there is I don't there's just this incredible feeling of just you, I get butterflies in my stomach when you see someone and they're so fucking good and and also they potentially don't know how good they are, and uh, isn't that I just think that's the buzz of it and you know they're better than mm. you but mm. like that's that's great that's just not a problem. Is that the best part of being a? I mean, because I always what, think a global. Well, 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 uh, well, I always think being a global CCO or being a CCO or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how you can spread yourself so thinly and st you know be creative in a role where you must always be in front of clients and mm. in meetings and just doing very senior level things. And I wonder wh what what's the aspect of being a very senior creative director that you that nourishes you the most or that you find the most valuable? Is it that? Uh, yeah, I, I also don't think that there's, uh, there's as with anything in life, I don't think, uh, we're really lucky, the industry that we work in, uh, people's lives don't depend on it, you know, there's not yeah. a button down, you can kind of define how you want to do it yourself, and I think if you get miserable in it, then you've got to figure out why mm. you're getting miserable in it. For me, it's really important to be happy without getting all Oprah, but it is, and I want to work somewhere that I actually want to walk in through the doors, uh, and I want people to feel the same, so... I will seek the thing. Obviously, I have responsibilities, but I'll seek the, the same things get me excited now as they did when I first started. Uh, you just have a bit more responsibility, and hopefully, you can um, you can make things happen. I think that's yeah. the difference. So, I, I'd still love. It's still working with people. You yeah. start off, particularly if you start off as a director, not particularly, but that is a very kind of. Um, uh, a very communal and collective and collaborative you know mm. this and broadcast is very much that actually yeah. well production is that and broadcast yep. is that and uh, there's no reason why what we do in agencies can't feel like that as well because it is that also yeah. and yeah, if I'm going to go and talk to clients, I want to have a really good time. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. have it all the time, but You're I right. want to have a really good time. So I sort of I don't know. I you just like, try you love and it make all. sure that. Yeah, no, not really. But yeah, but you make you you, you find the the you try find to, the bit. Yeah. Which, try yeah. to, and then you have a bit of a giggle. It's, yeah. it's not. Yeah, it shouldn't all be taken so bloody seriously, no, should it? I heartily agree. And and how have you? 
acted on Bill's words to you. So he said to you, make sure that you support others and you develop others and bring them on. To, to talk to us a little bit about how you've how, uh, that in practice. Um, uh, it's a good question. I don't know whether I've done anything uh, like really, uh, what's it called, like implemented a certain process or a but certain way to recruit or, or stuff like that. I... I know the convers. I know where I go to find people isn't one place, mm -hmm. and uh, I depend on and rely on uh, some brilliant sort of like a football club, brilliant talent searches really, and uh, and I I hope that I well it's not it's just not clinical. I, you mm. just get a sense from someone, and you get a sense that they're smart and there's huge potential. Uh, there's someone I've hired recently into the creative department who's never made an ad in his life. He's never gone near a bloody ad, but he's brilliant, mm. he's so clever, and he's so creative in a completely different way. And it's not about trying to mold him into what we do or anything, it's trying to learn from him and get him to spread his, his sort of magic, mm. um, I was about to say magic seed, and I thought that's a bit wrong. <laughs> uh, that's another well, that conference, kind of an and that is a serious, that's uh, a serious conference topic. Yeah. Magic, sorry, <laughs> magic everywhere. And he is doing, and it's not only his skill, but again, you know, you want to, he's just a brilliant lad. He's a great person. Yeah. And I've been really lucky to work, whether it's independent agencies or even big broadcasters, you know, mm. I, I had a fucking ball at ITV. Mm. Uh, it's just brilliant. They're just magic people mm. the, the people that I work with and there was loads of them mm. but they were just you just want to hang out with them and extremely talented and actually yes. that'll get me on to my qu next question yes. which when we spoke earlier this week you said you were a raging populist and you held up Coronation Street yeah. as the pinnacle of fantastic populist and groundbreaking culture and I could not agree with you more and the number of people I'm not watching Corey at the moment I kind of go on and off but yeah. the number of people I've said to that Coronation Street it breaks new ground incredible writing week yeah. after week after week fantastic acting the storytelling etc etc is it? Yeah, yeah. But it's so difficult to do. And I mean, ITV, you know, they make it look easy, but it's so difficult. And, and, I, and I sort of think with brands, that's even harder when you're talking about the kind of the populist brands, because it's all, almost kind of goes over into like utility. You know, if you're yeah. talking, I mean, you look after McDonald's and yeah. co-op and things. And these are such sort of mainstream brands. I think it's, uh, uh, to me, they can be some of the most difficult to bring to life or certainly to build people's affinity towards and yeah. I just wonder if you could talk about kind of the challenges and how you go about pro uh, like creating good populist content um, I, I don't uh, I don't think there's a formula for it and as you know from telly I mean uh, broadcast is full of incredibly talented people who like the toughest gig in broadcast is trying to come up with a Saturday night entertainment show and there's a reason why, um, and it's brilliant, by the way, you know, Saturday Night Takeaway is now on its 16th season and Dancing on Ice has come back as a recommission. I can wang on about this for ages. It's really difficult to find a format that works. It's fucking tricky. Uh, and populism, in my humble opinion, is the hardest thing in the world to do. Absolutely. Hardest, hardest. And it's not that niche is easy, not at all, but it's, um, it's a lot more focused. You can, you can, you can punch in tighter. Uh, uh, and Corey is just, uh, and I've got that from personal experience, you said it yourself, you know, you've got writers like Jonathan Harvey and Russell T. Davis have come from Corey. You've got actresses like Saran Jones and Sarah Lancashire and uh, directors and, and it, it's just, and there is a, uh, the thing that I, it, this isn't really answering your question, but the thing I love about broadcast and, and I hope that we're kind of injecting it, not just injecting in the agency, but the thing I just like to be around is the thing of making stuff. Mm. And I think in advertising, it can be quite a slow process. and Your energy can kind of get quite depleted. So it's kind of the onus is on all of us to be, uh, obviously, you've got to do the day-to-day -day and know what you do, but there's also got to be a whole bunch of stuff that you're doing out of your own passion. It's kind of, it's like being a chef, you know what I mean? Mm. You can't be a chef and not go into a kitchen and cook. Mm. Strange analogy, but you get the drift. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> shit analogy, actually, so apologies. <laughs> but um, just, I'm talking about making lots of stuff. But anyway... Um, it's, uh, I, at McDonald's was one of the reasons that I, I came to Leo's because it's just a, it's obviously, it's a huge, huge brand. Mm. And, I, and, and also coming to Leo's altogether was there isn't a snobbery in the bill. And that's really important to me that I, mm. I don't, I don't have, I don't have that personally. Uh, I know I'll, I'll go to a multi, I love a good Tom Cruise movie or a Steven Spielberg movie. Uh, 
because it's fucking difficult to mm. do. And, and to be able to go there and you watch something with your kid or you watch something with your grandmother is really bloody difficult. Um, and Maccas are, uh, they're an incredible client. And mm. I know people stand up and they say, I mean, brilliant client. They have to say it because they have to say it. <laughs> I'm not just saying it. They are, first and foremost, uh, really, really, really sound people. They're really good people. They really understand their brand. They're really good marketeers and they're human first. Uh, and they understand the role of their brand in people's lives, and they don't try and overstate that, I don't think, in my mm. humble opinion. And uh, they're interested in the kind of the humanity of their brand, and so therefore want to tell human stories. Mm. And because they're good marketeers, they understand the creative process. So there's a huge amount of trust, a huge, huge amount of trust. Uh, and there's a huge amount of conversation, but it's you feel like you're on the same side, mm. so you know you've, you've got a chance of getting somewhere decent because mm. you're not wasting time trying to second-guess each other. Um, mm. So it's not it's not easy mm. uh, at all, but you, there are just some ingredients, aren't yeah. there? That if you c and also again back to that kind of that collective, if you mm. have the right kind of collective of people inside and out and all around and partners and all that mm. stuff, then you got a bit of a go at it. We're going to go to questions in a minute because I'm sure people will have some questions to ask. So while you're thinking about anything your questions, about Coronation Street, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Anything. But can, but just to, can we just have one more question on TV and yeah. uh, uh, and moving over to brands or advertising, whatever you call it? And you said that that you found the the transition fairly relatively smooth, and it, you know you found the parallels. But I have to say, coming from TV into advertising, I felt that they were everything was it felt to be the same but op opposite. You know, yeah. it kind of upside down. Say the thing you said to me on the I would try and say the well thing I said clever. to the face. So it was really clever. <laughs> it's not that but, clever. Oh it's not that God, clever. Well, no, it wasn't that clever. But I felt that in in TV. Like the opp the opportunity to be creative is almost exa exactly the opposite in advertising and in TV. So in TV, the slot, the frequency, the length of time, the format, all of that is set. But then what you can do within that six half an hour episodes or one off documentary or whatever is completely down to you because all the broadcaster wants you to do is deliver an audience so you are, can be wildly creative and extremely groundbreaking as long as you conform to some quite rigid rules around the format and you know 10 o'clock on Saturday night or whatever it is yeah. whereas in advertising it felt to me that the, the, exactly the opposite was true which is that what they're very what the, the client is very clear about is the message that you need to deliver or yeah. the output that you need to deliver but everything else is up for grabs so we're going to be going to be using TV are we going to be doing something social yeah. how are we going to bring that to life you know and where and yeah. etc. So it just felt to me where I kind of came in thinking, okay, I kind of understand this. To, to actually thinking all the things, that were, all the places where I saw creativity reside, and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing and, and I'm simplifying it wildly because I know that TV and brands are converging so much. But yeah. that was the observation. It's a clever one, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well anyway, on that on that, that tumbleweed moment. Two years, like, uh, <laughs> really thinking about this. I just think that. Uh, anyway, but I think I think we cut to questions now. Yeah. If anybody cool. has a question for Shaka, um, do raise your hand. No, right, if you don't, either. No, no questions, but. Sh okay, what? Well, you can oh, play some music. That's cool. <laughs> you got a question? <laughs> Come on, then. Let's have a little dance. Look, on the back of them, I've got these. These are Nike IDs. <laughs> and, uh, on the back of them, look, I've got T. That's Tallulah Bell. That's my six-year-old. And I don't know whether this is Chav or whether it's sweet. Uh, I've got T.R. Tiger Rose. Just thought you might want to know that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you didn't ask me that at all. You just <laughs> said I've got nice sneaks on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Let's talk, give me your thing, give me your two. What two ingredients do you think make a really compelling human story with a branded um, time as well? Shall we just repeat that for the benefits of the oh, people? Do, yes. well, well, no, no, I'm going to try, but um, you were talking about you are a writer, producer, director on your own YouTube channel and you're obsessed with making stories. You are a chief storyteller and general all-round goddess of creative. He didn't say that part, but I sort of thought I, I thought that was the inference. Yes. Uh, so, well, but what, but, but, but what, what are what are the what are the two key ingredients of a of a of a compelling human story? Uh, thanks for starting off on such a simple question. Uh, no problem. Uh, I don't know if there's two ingredients. Uh, the the only thing uh, the, the most important thing. Uh, for, for me, and that's not just for me, that's for all the people that we're kind of working with, is that uh, it's actually not 
brand first. It always has to be human first. And I, I think, particularly from a from a sort of an advertising point of view, it's an, a, a sort of a uh, and this sort of links back to the, the thing that you were saying about the, the, the transition between sort of broadcast or television into advertising, why it's simpler, is because I think the, the, it's the same starting point, which is, uh, and I don't want to sound, uh, sorry if the words are a bit cliched, but cliches exist because they're true. Ultimately, we're just trying to find some kind of connection and a resonance. The thing that got me excited as a, a little Iranian beige kid in Devon was the fact that uh, there were these stories and these worlds out there that were so much bigger than my very small life. And they gave me hope and they gave me excitement. They made my bus, you know, stomach's going, my, uh, my bus fly, bus flies go in my stomach. And I look for the same thing now, which is, uh, is what's the thing, and it's sometimes from the things that I relate to in my own life, things that I relate to or I can see in other people's lives and I'm fascinated by it. Um, and God, I'm going to sound really eggy now. I think if it comes from a place of love, genuinely, like it, uh, I think. <laughs> all right, there we go. I think it 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 it's a good starting point. It doesn't mean you get it right, but I think we can overcome. It's really fucking difficult to do, but we can really overcomplicate it. And I hear a lot of times, you know. Uh, customers and the, and people are audiences first, and they are people and. If we concentrate on that, then we win hearts and we win minds and all the rest of it, and we've got some chance. So it's co it's really difficult to do, but I think it's really simple. And I also think that we kind of feel it. We just kind of know in our gut when something's happening. And we know when something just, it feels a bit mechanical and it feels like we've, yeah, and a bit over-intellectualized. And, and, you know, it helps that I'm not, you know, I'm not... I'm not the cleverest person in the world, so I need things brought down, you know, to not brought down to a level, but simplified, because then if I feel it, then I sort of know there's something in it. Lovely. I'm aware that we've really overrun. We're going to take one more question, because it's quarter two, so sorry, everybody, or maybe two if we can do it quickly. Um, but I'll yes, talk please. Quickly, I promise. <laughs> How do I handle difficult clients? Again, thank you for a really simple question. <laughs> what the fuck? Does someone want to ask me about the meaning of life? No, I've got a three-minute answer on it. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I try not to think of them as clients. I've, I don't... I sort of try and... Again, I don't want to sound all unicorns and rainbows, but uh, there's a reason why someone is conservative. It's not, it's not because someone's... I don't think it's... Well, sometimes you, f you, you meet difficult people, but that's on any level of work. Uh, I think there's a reason always for something. And if you try and find what the reason is and try and find uh, a way to be able to uh, explain or not even explain, but understand where it comes from, you've got a chance of being able to start at a different point maybe. So I think it just has to come down to uh, open it up a little bit more than just the relationship between as a client, as an agency or a client, as a creative, sort of human to human, go back a little bit, figure it out and not think there's one way for all. It's a different starting point. You know, people are worried about losing jobs. People, you know, conservatism just doesn't come from reading the Daily Mail. It comes from <laughs> worrying about stuff, you know what I mean? And uh, I think a lot of times it's just getting that and then kind of going, all right, I get it. Like, let's hold hands uh, in a cool way and uh, go through with it. <laughs> okay, we go, I saw one last question hovering in the middle and then we're going to go, we're going to close this. So is that hand still waving in the air or maybe... It's not a quick one. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I I don't know if we have got time for a long one. I don't. I don't know. No. Just go on. Holy fuck. <laughs> uh, that's a great question, babe. Whew. I haven't got a clue. Uh, I think we're all pretty rocking. It's pretty simple as that, really. Yeah, I, I don't know. Curiosity. Uh, I don't know. Curiosity, interest, bit of love, bit of craft. Bosh. Happy Thursdays, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.